going and welcome to Hyperbox Tech Tips and today I'm going to be showing you how to overclock an Intel Core i7 4790K. So I got this chip a couple days ago and I noticed there were not a lot of videos online on how to overclock this properly. So you're going to need two programs, CPU-Z and Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. I have the MSI version because I have an MSI motherboard and that was the software that came on the motherboard's site. So you're going to want to boot both of these programs up. You're going to be met with this screen and this screen. Go to the benchmarking tab. Just leave that later. And you're going to want to go into all controls when you're first greeted with this screen. You're going to be greeted with this warning. Just click I agree. It's, it's fine. You're going to be greeted with all this stuff. So don't worry about anything except these. Initially, when you come here, this is going to be disabled. You want to make sure enhanced Intel speed step technology is enabled. Core ICC Max is enabled and Turbo Boost Short Power Max is enabled. You just want to hit apply. You're probably going to be, have to restart your computer when you first do this because of some of the power modifications. So after your, your computer reboots, you should be able to jump right back into this overclock. So you don't want to touch reference clock again. It's, it's not going to do anything. You don't want to run your CPU at more than when it's normally running then it has to because when you modify the reference clock that's every all the time you're only one gonna modify your boost clock which is the multipliers on your active cores now initially how Intel Turbo Boost works is when four cores are under load it's gonna go jump to 42 gigahertz and when there are three cores active you, you wanna make this always active you wanna have your overclock all the time so what you're gonna do is increase on all cores keep all of them the same don't change them it doesn't matter you want to have the max overclock on all cores no matter how many cores it's running on so before you do that you want to adjust your voltage so I'm gonna adjust my voltage all the way up to 1.295 and what this is gonna do is it's gonna let you attain the maximum overclock you can with your chip without actually damaging it you don't want to go above 1.3 you can actually go to 1.3 if that's the only way you can get a good overclock don't go over 1.3 you'll damage your chip in the long run so I know for a fact that I can go to 4.8 gigahertz or 48 multiplier when overclocking now to test to make sure your overclock is stable you just want to run this stress for a couple seconds if it blue screens then go to higher voltage and go to a lower core so you want to make sure you can get the max so you're at a stable overclock right now right so what we're going to slowly do is decrease the voltage just just a little bit to make sure you can get the lowest voltage which means lower temperatures I'll, I'll discuss temperatures in a bit so I know for a fact that I can only get to 1.285 gigahertz without you know 1.2 volts not gigahertz <laughs> without blue screening and this is a prolonged test it won't blue screen initially if I go lower but if I run it for a few minutes it'll blue screen so after you attain a lower voltage with your good multipliers on your course you will run this for a couple minutes 30 minutes an hour to make sure your overclock is completely stable because you don't want this bunking out when you're in the middle of a game that's gonna just mess up your entire experience so one thing I want to address is temperatures and core voltage mode I like to run my core voltage mode on static this generally gives me a more stable overclock when I'm you know, messing around with, but it might give adaptive, might be better for you. What you're going to want to do is you are going to look at the temperature. So when I'm stressing my CPU, my temperatures dump in between 70 to 75, depending on whether I have either adaptive or static. You can see this. doesn't make a difference usually it doesn't so I just want to address that secondly good temperatures for an overclock is under 70 degrees is generally okay you're doing great like absolutely perfect 80 degrees under 80 degrees is okay it's, it's normal average temperatures over 80 degrees is it could be better and over 90 degrees is absolutely unacceptable if you go over 90 degrees you're gonna damage your chip so don't go over 90 degrees so this is my stable overclock 4.8 gigahertz with 1.28 volts with static or voltage mode you might get different results every chip is different 
I may have gotten more lucky than you have. You may have gotten more lucky than I have. What makes your chip good is how high of an overclock you can attain with a higher voltage and how high of an overclock you can attain with a lower voltage. So the lowest voltage and the highest boost clock is what makes a, a chip good. That's what makes, you know, it's a lottery. You get a better chip based on, you know, anything, random stuff. You could get a great chip, you could get a bad chip. I hope this video helped you guys. I know I had a lot of fun making it. You can leave a like, leave a dislike if you think it sucked. Leave a comment, subscribe. You know, this is a new thing, me doing this channel. I thought I might, you know, help out the community with some tech tips that seem to be lacking in some areas. I'll see you guys in the next video.